Welcome to a special Best of Cosmetic Care episode of Care Experts. We put together the most popular and talked about episodes of the year. We'll be covering injectables and mommy makeovers with Dr. Justin West, tummy tucks with Dr. Ferris Yamin, and building collagen with Dr. Shirley Solomon. Let's get started. So let's get right into it. What exactly are injectable fillers? So anything that we use in a syringe, put through a needle into somebody's face or, or other part of the body would be, a, uh, would be an injectable. We've got the, the most common things we do would be Botox, which is for wrinkles mm -hmm. uh, or any neurotoxin because there's a whole host of them. Um, and then fillers are really just about adding volume because one of the key features with facial aging is a loss of volume. So we want to restore that to make people look more youthful. So what exactly are they used for? I know you said fillers are to inject volume and yeah. Botox is for just for relax wrinkles? muscles. Yeah, okay. for wrinkles, exactly. So okay. whether it's pre prevention of wrinkles or whether it's management of existing wrinkles, exactly. Botox and all the other neurotoxins uh, mostly go after like the fine lines that people acquire over time after mm -hmm. a lifetime of animation. And how would you help decide or like help a patient decide between if Botox or fillers are right for them? Well, it comes down to what their concern is. So when people start talking about their, their lines, let's say between their eyes, uh, their crow's feet, that's almost always gonna be a neuromodulator, something that relaxes the muscles. When people come in and say, um, you know, I look tired or, you know, my face is looking different. I'm, you know, Zoom has brought up all these concerns that people maybe didn't know how to express before because people are staring, staring at themselves, at faces, yeah. you know, on, on their screens all the time. And they're saying, I look hollow here. Or, my, why, does my, why am I looking older? Um, and, and so it, the, the common denominator with most of those findings, it's, lo it's change in volume. It's either the volume is going away or it's descending. And so we can add volume where people have lost it. And, and it's a really easy, quick way to restore, to, to take years off of people's face. Thank you, doctor, that was great. Now let's join Dr. Ferris Yamin for Tummy Tucks. So Dr. Yamin, today we're talking about tummy tucks. Now, can you explain to me what exactly is a tummy tuck? Tummy tuck, or the name for it is abdominoplasty. It's basically you're trying to get rid of any excess skin or redundant skin and tissue from the lower abdomen and trying to shape the abdomen. Now, is this procedure painful and is there going to be any long-term scarring? So the pain from the procedure, it is uh, a little bit more of the painful side because, okay. again, we are tightening these, these muscles. All this time, these muscles are relaxed, sitting on the side, they're, they're doing nothing. And now we all of a sudden brought them back into the middle. It's almost like you just wake up and you have done thousand sit-ups all at once. Oh, wow. That's how it's going to feel. The scar, again, back to the, how meticulous you are in taking care of the edges of the skin, aligning them. Okay. Six layers, seven layers of closure, special kind of sutures. I remove the outer layers of sutures on different periods in the healing process and address it with an aggressive scar management. And I also provide my, my patients with a lot of nutritional supplements because if your nutritional baseline at, at its optimum, yeah, your imagine. healing is also at its optimum. Your chances that the quality of the scar will, uh, will be the best. And most of my patients in about uh, four to six months, most of their scars, the scar around the belly button, most of the time disappears. Yeah. You cannot even tell. You have to like really dig inside. And that's due to the special technique. I do the suturing from the inside. The scar down, it's, go it's going to be much lower than, than a C-section. I usually go very low below the bikini line, and I limit myself to the hip bone to hip bone for a main reason. If you are wearing whatever bikini you like to wear, I don't want my scar to show mm -hmm. from, from the edges. What is the recovery timeline after a tummy tuck? So it is one of the procedures that I prepare my patients for it. It has a little bit the longest recovery because okay. I do tighten the muscles, because I do shape uh, uh, the, the body. So there will be no heavy activities for at least four to six weeks sometimes, depending on the patient, depending on the size of the, uh, of the tummy tuck. We have an incision that, that we have to heal and we have to maintain our, uh, our application. Thank you, Dr. Yamin. It's time to talk building collagen with Dr. Shirley Solomon. So what actually causes you to lose collagen? Um, aging is, of course, a big part of it and just genetics. But um, outside of that, there are things that you can control, things like smoking, ultraviolet light, um, taking too much sugar, or um, having a poor diet. Things like that can increase your risk of losing collagen a little bit faster or as you age. When would someone actually need collagen therapy? So um, 
it's really good for anyone because mm -hmm. when you're younger, you can help to prevent collagen loss. And as you get older, you can help to um, treat collagen loss. Collagen, um, just as much as it's a slow loss over your whole life, it's mm -hmm. also a slow gain because we can't inject it. So um, we have to just induce collagen production. And the body is very slow in uh, producing collagen. Okay. And so starting early is important because then you can uh, maintain as opposed to wait till you lose a lot and then try to reverse it. And I know one form of collagen um, to stimulate collagen is micro needling. So how exactly does that procedure work? So if you've ever had a cut, mm -hmm. you would see how first you scab within a few hours yeah. and then your skin grows over that scab, right? Mm -hmm. um, and replaces that scab. Um, that's the cascade that we try to hack into. When you make these tiny little dots into the skin, these micro cuts mm -hmm. that you can't really visualize, but they're there, the body thinks you have a cut and it starts producing those um, proteins that help the healing process start to take place. And then also, if you've noticed when you get a scab, the skin starts to get tighter, tighter, tighter. So that's the same principle that happens when you have these little microscopic cuts into the skin. Um, the skin starts to shrink a little bit. So while you're producing collagen, while you're producing new growth of skin, um, and even shedding some of the old skin to allow the new skin to take its place in a more even manner or healed manner, um, you're also getting a lot of tightening. And talk to me a little bit about collagen injectables. What are the difference between the two? Great question. So collagen is no longer FDA approved in the United States. Okay. So injection of collagen would be very uneven, lumpy. We just don't do it. Okay. Um, the best way to get collagen is to induce it. Okay. So you kind of make the skin produce that collagen. And there are a lot of variety of ways. There's things like creams like Retin-A. Um, there are radio frequencies. So there's the heat type of producing collagen. Again, lasers, radio frequency falling into that category. There's mm -hmm. trauma that can produce collagen, that's the microneedling, um, causing the, the body to try to heal, so then it induces the collagen production. And then there's irritation of the skin that can also induce collagen. So if you're putting things like threads underneath the skin, mm -hmm. the body doesn't like threads. So it creates uh, a defense mechanism, it tries to create a cocoon around that thread, and that cocoon is uh, collagen production, exactly in the direction you put the thread. So um, again, it's a bit slow, but um, over time, if you just keep working on it, then you can in increase your collagen firmness of the skin over the long um, term of your life. Thank you, Dr. Solomon. Now back to Dr. West for questions about mommy makeovers. So I wanna ask you, what exactly is a mommy makeover, first of all? Yeah, it's a term that we would apply in general to patients who are having surgery on their belly and breast. And then there's different variations on that theme. So for a lot of patients, they're also having liposuction. But once you do breast and belly surgery at the same time, that's typically something that people will re refer to as a mommy makeover. Okay. And what is the advantages of doing all these procedures at once? It's a good question. So I think the main issue for patients that we find is people have a hard time taking off time of work or time away from their kids or, or, or their busy lives. So people like to combine surgery so they can get as much done in, in one recovery period. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who exactly would be the ideal candidate for a mommy makeover? So most of our patients are going to be, you know, women who have had, multi, you know, one child, two children, twins, whatever the case may be, where they've developed the common concerns of skin laxity of the belly. Um, they're, they don't like the way they look on their profile because the rectus muscles have separated. They get what's called a rectus diastasis when the muscles get pushed apart through pregnancy. So we put those back together. Okay. And then those patients might have some areas of fat that they're just having a hard time getting rid of, you know, six months or a year, at, you know, into their sort of, you know, recovery from their last child. And how long does a mommy makeover typically last? So I think for the belly part, I typically think of tummy tucks as being a one-time procedure. It's pretty uncommon in most practices to do a tummy tuck over and over again over a lifetime. Okay. With liposuction, if somebody comes into you 20 years later at the same weight, then they could have the same result 20 years after liposuction. Breast surgery is a little bit different. Most people, you know, gravity, 
never stops, you know, it's always present. So it's always going to be changing the position of breast. And the, the, the change for everybody is the breast drop over time. So we can do a lift and bring breasts up to sort of a pre-pregnancy position. Mm -hmm. And then whether it's in five or 10 or 20 years, at some point the breasts are going to drop again. So patients will come back and have a second lift or they'll have an implant related issue and then we'll change out their implants. So I don't tend to think of breast surgery as being one and done. Yeah. But for tummy tucks and lipo, it, it frequently is. Thanks for joining us for this special best of cosmetic care episode of Care Experts. All of our featured care experts recommend and accept the Care Credit credit card. For more information, visit carecredit.com.